Hello everybody and welcome to another time lapse painting. Thank you for joining me. This is Friends in High Places. This is the final painting. When it's done, as you can see, it's quite textured with emphasis on the heads of the yaks. These amazing golden yaks. Probably very rare, but you know, when they're your friends, they're of course rare. As you can see, I started with the background, the farthest, farthest point back, which is these mountains. And for the mountains, I decided to just sketch in my little sketchbook. Just a couple of triangles here and there, just to be like, okay, this is where I want the mountains to be. And then I quickly referenced the Himalayas, just because that's the first place I thought of where yaks would be. Actually, more specifically, Nepal. And so I used kind of a reference of what the mountains look like there. The one thing about mountains is, is, is that they're not exactly easy to make because of the nature of modeling paste. Because modeling paste usually is kind of globby and you know more like clouds. And mountains are sharp, jagged. They're, not, they're never too round. I mean, they are sometimes, but they're not exactly round. I feel like I was really happy with the way it turned out though. But it took me it took me longer than it seemed. So uh, you saw me use a palette knife which I haven't used in a long time, but I just use it to just throw on a quick layer over the green quicker than a brush and also drag my fan brush over the grass area just to create a little bit more texture. And then I went straight into the clouds. There's something cooler watching clouds play along the mountains, grabbing, floating around, tumbling over, tumbling down, you know, just all the cool things the clouds do. And I've gotten the many chances in my life to see this happen, especially when I go hiking in tall mountains, especially in the Rocky Mountains. And I hope you do get a chance to see those things too, because man, it's, it's, you could spend easily a day just sitting there watching them play. So after I used my fan brush, my trusty old fan brush, my favorite one, to just throw the globs of clouds, I went to my trusty old round brush, which I used to detail work. And I went back into the clouds and I just wanted to make the clouds move more, especially because they're in this like whirlwind or yeah, I guess whirlwind area where all types of air f currents are flowing. In the so. Of course, the mountains are gonna, or the clouds are going to be a little bit more moved, a little bit more stretched by all these wind currents. So I decided to get that brush. Good workout. As you can see, I even sharpened the tip of the end of the brush. I use a pencil, pencil sharpener, and sharpen the end. And I use that usually to remove things. Oopsie, there it's on there. I dropped a chunk. But anyway, here, real quick, I did a little. After everything dry, I did a quick layer of just translucent white, very translucent, just so it settles into the cracks of the mountain so I could know where the snow would gather the most. And after I finished that, I went to the grass. For the grass, I like to do something kind of specific, which is take the brush and let, or first take the brush, dip it in, in a little bit of paint, get the paint in all the bristles, and then let it dry. And then I spread the bristles of this fan brush so that I can end up with like four, five, six, seven tips, depending on the brush. I think for this one I got about, let me look at it real quick, it's right next to me. I've got about, oh, well, about 10, 10 tips because they're separated and held firm by the dried out paint. and then. I use that to draw, uh, apply the grass because it's having t 10 tips makes it faster. Plus, this is like the background grass. It's not the main grass I'm gonna add. And if you look in the green chunk of paint I'm using, that green in my little bowl, you see how I leave like little like drag marks, scratch marks in the modeling piece itself, and that's because of the teeth of the brush or the many. 
bris many uh, separate bristles of the brush. So this this process is nice because I can listen to this podcast. I don't think about anything. I was listening to music, just throwing. And now we move on to the legs. <laughs> it's legs. The yaks themselves. But at first, I'm gonna start with the legs. <clears throat> and I just started with a light brown color, goldenish brown, a bunch of raw umber, some red, a little bit of blue, and then gold. I have a metallic gold, like, what do you call it? Luminescent? Luminescent. Uh, iridescent paint I added to this giant glob of wax paint, and I got to the foot, to the foot, to the feet. Next are such funny creatures because they have, they're basically just like giant cows, or giant cows, they're just cows, but they have a ton of fur. And when I was looking at how to paint them and how to set them up in this painting, I was looking through a lot of reference photos and videos, and they're really, they're really cool because they come in so many different shapes and sizes. They're kind of just like, almost like dogs when it, when, when it comes to breeds. For these ones, I actually chose um, maybe the most like common version of people have seen. But there's some interesting ones. There's some red ones. There's some black ones. There's some gray ones. There's some mangy ones. They range from like pristine fur taken care of to like wild ones who are just like missing chunks of fur or have just a, a ridiculous amount of uh, knots in their fur. Or in their hide. Is that what they would call the hide? As you can see, I started with the heads first. Just to kind of set up where they're going to be. Because this is, this is this just the underground, underground, under painting part. So I can uh, make the heads pop out even more later. As you can see, when I, this paint dries, it dries very dark. You can't quite tell in this video, but if you see it in real life, this well, if you were saw it in real life, then it was very shiny. The this brown. And here I go moving into the body, <laughs> just moving the paint around, trying to get kind of the movement of the. F of the height for I should look at what it's called but I forget it as you can see I moved to my trusty brown brush to get the little details in there I tried a bunch of different brushes for this just to see like how which, how the long fur would look and I actually ended up using my brush with the hardened bristles that I have used for my grass. Did a little cool little effect so then after those little teeth marks came out I went back in with a different brush and then just drew more lines in there. For just the overall composition of these paintings, I actually ended up grabbing a couple of pictures here and there of yaks. You know, I, I kind of like Frankenstein this one, took the legs of this one, the head of that one, half the body of this one, and then kind of just used that as a reference to how to make them. <clears throat> and then got into it. The fur, I kind of just winged it. <laughs> I should say winged it. I, I still use reference, and it was fairly uh, convinced of the way I was making it. As you can see, it kind of went back. You see the heads are there, kind of covered again. I was a little bit anxious when I was covering the heads with just because 
I was like, oh man, I hope I can come back to it and get it right so I don't have to re or I don't end up like un doing my pr like I hope I don't end up doing my previous work and get it right, keep the proportions the same as when I was started. But it came out, of course, right at the end. I don't think I ever, there's ever a painting when I paint when I don't start getting a sense of anxiety. Unfortunately now, <clears throat> my uh, camera ran out of battery and unfortunately I missed out on the horns. So, I don't know what happened to the videos, it, or I, have, I wasn't able to record them unfortunately, so here I am finishing off the heads. Well, I mean, you know how I, the horns were done, the same as everything else. Adding some ears. And then curling the fur on their heads. <clears throat> I wanted to make these guys extra woolly. It's actually kind of fun just <laughs> doing little curls and swirls on their heads, especially the top of their head. They have those little like afro slash like I don't know like spaghetti hairstyle <laughs> or that's just it maybe macaroni carols. <laughs> As you can see, I always like to move the painting around a little bit. Yes, so I can get in certain areas around the edges and the dips of the texture. So I pick it up right there. Uh, just so I can see from the top because it's, if I see it from the angle, it might look different. Or by the proportions might be off. But it, they weren't. And then I moved on to painting the background, the grass areas. That would be on the mountains. It has a quick little layer. And then I <coughs> painted a translucent layer over the grass just to make it pop for later. And here I am making darker, the closer areas and lightening up the light back, back, more back areas. Or leaving lighter the back areas. You'll notice that when it dries out that that it doesn't look as colorful. The color fades away, see? Is it when it dries out that all the color fades? And here I'm painting the yaks dark, but I wasn't planning that I make them gold as first or goldenish at first. I was actually making planning to make them dark, but then after it dried, I didn't like the dark, so I went golden. Then I didn't like the golden, so I changed the color again. And then I went you know, full gold. Like, just absolutely full gold. And for this part, I actually did a couple of different layers. Just kept on adding... This, like, golden layer. Because it... It's kind of see-through, so I need to do a bunch of different layers. And I also like that the... After I painted them black, I like that the underpainting was black, so then when I painted with gold, some of the black would show through, or the dark brown, whatever it is, and give it a little bit more depth. And then... Later on, I decided I wanted to make the mangy. <laughs> I was going through a bunch of different phases painting this before I decided on the final one. I was like, maybe I want the mangy. But no, I ended up canceling that. Went back to the black for the underpainting of the 
of them. Oh yeah, one thing you didn't get to see in this video is I also used a piping bag that I'm using now to make more grass lines. But here I am just adding the little flowers that will grow and it's like up and it's like meadow plateau area above a high elevation. I think that was just me squeezing paint in, a, in that bowl because it was getting clogged and I just kept on squeezing out until whatever was inside the tube came out and then I decided to switch from yellow to blue just to have a little bit of diversity so on the left it's a lot more yellow on the right it's a lot more blue this new tool this piping bag it's such a cool th thing to use, such a great tool. It saves so much time. Before I used to do all of this with just a thin round brush and scooping up little gloves and applying them. This just, it's a game changer for me. But here we are back again. Trying to get the colors right on the yaks. Back to the gold. Just a little variation of it. I think I this time I added just a little bit of brown into it just to not be just only gold. So here I'm just going covering them all up and then doing a couple more layers on top. I also changed the color of the sky a little bit. It was too uh, too dark. I needed it to lighten it up a bit. It was a then it seemed more like night than, or it seemed more like evening than it seemed like afternoon. Here I'm adding the eyes finally, and then the, and the painting the horse dark, horns darker, giving them a little bit of eyebrows and eye eye area stuff. <laughs> Try not to make them look mean either, you know. Don't want them to look mean, but don't want them to look, to look goofy. Just want them to look friendly. For noses, I literally, I literally just went straight to raw umber. Then I decided to add some highlights to the fur, as you can see I'm doing this. And later on, I didn't like it though, because it was too white and too, too um, highlighted. But... When I painted over, when I decided to paint over it again, I, did, I just used a thin layer, a translucent layer, and which works out really well by like neutralizing the brights a little, and, but also keeping some of their effect in the paint. Pardon my head. <laughs> If you, had, if you didn't see, I also added a little sun in the background, just hanging above the mountains. And then I wanted to add some shadows into the fur, so I did that. And of course, once this dries and I looked at it, I was like, ugh, it looks too wild. Ugh, it looks cooler. Excuse me. It looks cooler in the video than it did in real life but when I when I was done with this I just was unhappy with it so then I decided to put one more thin layer over it but also try to keep those highlight shadows and highlights popping out or just showing a little bit and there you are <clears throat> another well done painting I was very happy with it thank you for joining me take care